Hey horse lovers, welcome back to Free Spirit Equestrian. So I posted yesterday's video and we talked about Belle's latest vet appointment and she was diagnosed with shivers. So my local vet originally thought that too, but we wanted to explore other possibilities because there isn't an actual test for shivers. It's just based off clinical signs and specific movements. And then again, we went to OSU and did the bone scan. Now, obviously they read my local vet's report when I sent her to OSU and they also thought that shivers was a possibility, but I wanted to work with the specialist, Dr. Davis, to really get another answer and do more of a neurological exam and just some additional testing like the palpation of her rectum and different components. So the good news is we now know what she has, but the bad news is I don't think people understand the magnitude of shivers. And honestly, after the initial vet appointment, it took me a couple days just to sort it out mentally to figure it out because yesterday I posted the video, but I filmed it a few days prior. And shivers is a serious disease and it is debilitative and it can progress. Now, some horses progress quicker than other horses. You just have no idea how they're gonna respond. And there is no treatment and there is no cure. There are only things you can do to make the horse more comfortable, which we're going to do, and I'm going to talk about that. But today, I just want to go into detail about her situation and what our future plans are. Kyle's just going to help film and be here for moral support today. <laughs> yeah. But we're also going to answer some questions regarding the comments from yesterday's video. And today, Belle is doing good. Aren't you, sweetheart? Are you a good girl? Yes, you are. Okay, so let's talk more about Shivers itself. Now I posted a few articles that were talking about shivers and essentially it is a neuromuscular neurological disease that affects the horse. Now there is a lot of speculation regarding the origin of shivers. There really isn't solid evidence, okay? And there is some information out there. I've actually found a really intelligent researcher and then I put some of her articles in the description and the comments so you can read about it. I don't wanna go hardcore into talking about the scientific aspects of the disease but basically what the disease does is it causes the neurotransmitters to malfunction. So that is why when you go to pick up Belle's leg, she responds in the way she does and she makes that motion. And you saw that in yesterday's video. And I'm actually gonna show you a clip of that again, just so you can have another visual or just in case you didn't see that video. So you're gonna see that now. Go ahead. And walk yeah, that's just so weird. Yeah, the injections didn't really didn't, do anything. Didn't do anything. Nope, which I kind of thought, but whatever. Now, I want to be clear. She does make that movement with the other leg too. However, she's a lot better about picking up that left leg. And I don't see it so much in her left hind as I do in her right. And the reasoning is because upon her palpation of her rectum and feeling around her uterus and her pelvic floor in that area, she did have more scarring on the right psoas area. So that explains why the shivers is worse on that side. However, it's going to eventually affect the left side too, okay? It's just a matter of time, considering that this disease is unfortunately progressive. Now she does make that motion with the left hind when you go to pivot her or put her in a stall or sometimes when she's backing. So it is still prevalent in that leg. So again, we don't really know 100% what causes this disease. It is more common in draft horses or warm bloods, larger horses. Usually it's more common in geldings or stallions, but obviously it can still happen with mares, of course. And it's one of those diseases that can come out of nowhere and they can start showing signs usually around the age of five or seven or sometimes later, or sometimes there's been cases where it's really early, like two years old. So with that being said, when I first purchased Belle, she did not do that with her back legs or her, her left or right leg, okay? There was nothing weird when she was backing or anything regarding that. I started noticing some different movement like that. It obviously wasn't as bad as it is now, but I noticed that movement about three months into owning her. So when I first bought her and I went to pick up her back right leg, she totally could. I mean, she was a little slow about it, but like that's normal. She's in a new environment and you know a little weak in the hind and then we found out she was pregnant so i wasn't concerned because it was nothing like that it wasn't shaking or anything she would just kind of you know look at me and lift and then i would lift it she would set it down but then i would lift it back up no problem i mean she had shoes on all four hooves 
and the farrier was able to take her shoes off and trim her and we were good for quite a few trims. I did start noticing that she was having a little more trouble picking up that leg and we did some chiropractic work, but then Ezzy was part of the picture, okay? She was still in the womb, but then she had Ezzy, so I'm like, I'm not sure if it's just part of pregnancy or anything like that. And then what I noticed is after she had Ezzy, I had my vet out again and we discussed that it could be shivers, but she was living comfortably. We were able to trim her and then it got to a point where we did that exam and we wanted to just wait until Ezzy was weaned before we did some hardcore investigation because we knew we might have to sedate her and she was lactating and Ezzy was nursing at the time. Plus, if we had to haul her anywhere, I just think it would have been too crazy to bring Ezzy with and she was surviving like completely comfortably, right? Like there wasn't an issue. Um, she did have some trouble picking her leg up for the farrier. And that's why right when Ezzy was weaned, we took her to OSU and did the bone scan and everything. So the farrier literally has to trim her from the ground. Like she cannot pick up that back right leg. She couldn't pick it up while she was sedated for the last vet exam. There's nothing you can do. And a lot of you keep recommending red light therapy, chiropractic, myofascial release. Like I'm doing all of that, okay? Do not worry about that. And I wanna say, I really, really appreciate the suggestions, but at the same time, sometimes it's just too much. Like if I'm being completely honest, the support is amazing. If you really think you have, you know, some substantial information, it's appreciated. But I don't think people are understanding that now we know what she has. She has shivers. Chiropractic is gonna help her in the sense of, it's gonna loosen things up and, and all the body work and hydrotherapy and Beamer and all the things we're doing already but that's not going to cure the problem or solve it like this is a a disease that is going to continue to break her down and that is just the truth okay so i appreciate the recommendations but at the same time it's honestly a lot to hear because i don't think people understand that you can't fix this you can only put a band-aid on and help her and you know just kind of make her more comfortable which obviously we're going to do and we're going to talk about so with that being said, you kind of understand more of the timeline regarding this. I 100% do not think that the people who sold her at the Amish auction knew that she had shivers because I was able to pick up her legs at the auction. Like I picked up all four legs, I trotted her, I backed her up, no issues, or I wouldn't have purchased her. Even if I would have done a PPE, there's no like actual test for shivers, for equine shivers, okay? So there is no way that anybody would know I think it could have been a few different reasons. I think maybe they didn't think that Belle took, as in she wasn't actually pregnant with Esmeralda, or they knew she took and that they didn't have, you know, room, space, or food, time, whatever, money to take on another full. Or, you know, it was February when I bought her last year. They're running low on hay. I mean, that's what her note said. So maybe somebody approached them and said, hey, I'm going to the auction. And they're like, oh, well, let's just sell Belle and put her on the trailer. I don't think it was anything like that, like they're trying to hide something. Do I know for sure? No, but I definitely do not think that anyone thought it was shivers because Belle was also examined when she first got here, hence why we found out that she was pregnant, okay? So she's sound. And this is the other thing with shivers. People are seeing her move and they're like, oh, she's sound. Somebody even commented that on one of the comments on the last video saying, well, I think it's good because she can move sound. That is not the case, okay? I mean, it is, like she is sound, but with shivers, you oftentimes don't see it in the walk and the trot. You see it when they're backing up or lifting up their leg. This is again, just me trying to educate and explain what this is. And I'm gonna be doing even more research on shivers so that I can understand it from a better standpoint and you know share that information with you. Because all of this at Free Spirit Equestrian is a journey, okay? We have a mission and because of what I do, finding horses from all different situations. And again, I think I could have bought her a private sale. Like let's say she was already trained and she was a dressage prospect and she was, you know, started under saddle and I rode her and did a PPE. This still wouldn't have presented itself where she was when I first purchased her. Does that make sense? So moral of the story, horses are a journey and sometimes they're just gonna have issues. All horses have some type of issue. There is no perfect horse. Some are worse than others, obviously, from a physical standpoint, but there's always gonna be things that come up and that's just part of what we do here. And it's gonna be more prevalent at Free Spirit Equestrian because we're, we are going to auctions 
and getting horses with no history or information, okay? So I just wanted to explain that. I don't think they dumped her at the auction because of this. I don't think anybody knew if that makes sense. And obviously, you know, this has been three appointments now. We finally got confirmation that this is what it actually is because I think this vet saw it and he's like, this is shivers. And he really did a honed in detailed neurological exam to come to that conclusion. And based on all the research I've done too, now I can fully 100% agree with that's what she has. And regarding EPM and Lyme, that has been ruled out. She does not have that. So again, appreciate the suggestions, but we know what it is now. So we don't really need those suggestions. We have a diagnosis. So let's talk a little bit more about how Belle looks. So come over here, Kyle. We talked about this in the last video. So she's obviously resting, so her hip looks more uh, protruded right now. Her weight is good. She's at a healthy weight, but she is atrophied, okay? I mean, she's sloping down now. She's sucked in at the hip. And if you look at videos from when I first purchased her, I mean, she was the same weight, but she had more muscle on her butt, okay? And she's been doing groundwork and exercises to help strengthen that, but at the same time, this is a classic sign of what's going on with her, with the shivers, the muscle atrophy, the movement of the legs. I also wanna say her legs are not swollen, okay? Somebody else brought up her legs. They're not swollen. This isn't what the disease is, okay? It, it's basically neuromuscular. Uh, it's neurological, so it's a little bit different in that sense. Okay, so things that we're gonna be doing for Belle to help her, okay? I first off wanna say that this diagnosis is not good news and the prognosis is not good. So I just wanna be straightforward with you on that. But like I said in the last video, we're doing vitamin E supplements, not just like regular supplements through her feed because she gets that anyway. Like she's on California Trace Plus and like a forage based diet now, but she's going to be getting the oral injections of the vitamin E. I just ordered it. I'm waiting for it to come in. So that will help her get to the levels that she needs. And then we will test her to make sure her levels are efficient. Obviously, like I said, she's getting chiropractic massage. We actually have quite a few appointments lined up for all of the horses, which of course, Miss Bell will be included. We're gonna be doing groundwork with her and helping her to strengthen a little bit. But again, you can only do so much, okay? And then we're gonna make sure she gets lots of movement. I'm gonna to try to figure out like the pasture situation for her. With weaning, this is just the situation she's in now with her paddock and she has a friend in and out with her so she's not alone. But we're gonna figure out like her long-term pasture situation. I still have to figure that out. But we wanna make sure that she's turned out, getting ample turnout, movement, the correct diet, supplements. Oh, sweet girl, you're so good. You're so good. So we're gonna do everything we can to keep her comfortable. So talking more about the prognosis of equine shivers. So it is not good. Like I said, there's only things you can do to keep her comfortable, to keep... This is a serious thing, okay? You can't be silly right now. So the prognosis for shivers is not good. And in my last video, like I knew what shivers was to an extent, because obviously I'd like researched it, but it didn't really hit me until, I don't know, until after that last appointment, like knowing she has it, right? And the thing with shivers is like I said, there's nothing that you can do besides keeping her comfortable, there's nothing you could do to fix it. And basically like most horses, they have a really bad prognosis and they eventually have to be euthanized when it gets to the point that they can no longer live comfortably or get trimmed properly or whatever the case may be. There's also situations where horses have a really great career and it doesn't affect them for years. But the issue with Belle is you know, when we first got her, like I said, she seemed fine, but now she literally can't even pick up that back right leg. And that's not good, which is showing that it's progressing 
quickly for her. And, you know, she's probably between, like I said, eight or nine years old based on her teeth. So I don't know like how long she'll be able to stay comfortable. And I'm not trying to cause like panic or anything. I'm just telling you what it is because she literally could have 10 years and be happy and comfortable. It could be a situation where she only has one year and it's continuing to deteriorate, deteriorate her. I know, and she's so sweet and it just sucks. And honestly, I'm just kind of a mess because I just, it's just hard for me to process because she's so cool. And like, you know, when I first got her, it just, I just thought that she was going to be a riding horse. And it's not about, oh, I can't ride her. Like, I don't, I don't care. It's just like, I had this idea of, you know, riding her and having like those dreams. And then she gifted me beautiful Ezzy which is awesome. So like that totally changed everything, which was so cool. But then in my mind, I'm still thinking, okay, yeah, like, you know, she had Ezzy, now we're gonna continue on and she's gonna have a great life and a future. And now she really doesn't because of where she's at in her stage. I know, I'll get you a treat. Where she's at in her stage of equine shivers. I 100% in my heart, do not believe it makes any sense to try to make her a riding horse or a driving horse like that. That is not going to happen, nor do I think it's fair. And people say shivers isn't painful, but there's no way you can measure that. I mean, the fact that she knows to step away when you go to pick up that leg, even though she can't control the actual movement from a neural standpoint, she still obviously is moving away because something's wrong. So there is pain associated, in my opinion. So in good faith, I can't ride her. And like driving, like anything like that. Groundwork I think is beneficial, keeping her moving and active and stuff like that, yes. But I know, you're bored. You're like, why are we talking? But um, I just don't think that's gonna be a good fit. now. The vitamin E, once we get that in, that could help a lot. But still, I think it's just gonna be a temporary temporary comfort, right? So it also doesn't make sense to risk her how she's feeling and then risk my safety trying to train her knowing that there's this issue, knowing that she also has some, you know, I think some mental things to work through too, some trauma. It's not only physical, I think she, has not really been dealt like maybe the best hand. Again, I don't know her future, but I just feel like there's emotional trauma from her as well. And I am working with an animal communicator too, so I will talk to you more about that in a different video later down the road. Um, but we got some good information and that's completely separate from like the vet and like the diagnosis and everything. It's just something else that I'm doing. Actually, it's my friend, so she just offered that to me. Very kind of her. And breeding wise, there could be a genetic component. I'm not honestly super worried about Ezzy. Is it a possibility Ezzy could have it too? Yes, but I'm not even gonna go there right now. Doing my research, it seems like it can be, but then it can't be. And they don't have a solid answer or proof that it is. So I'm not gonna sit here and worry about that when we don't have proof based off research, you know? and studies. There's a very small pool of horses that they've studied. So I'm not really taking that, you know, literally. I'm not gonna breed her number one, even though she was is breeding sound, based on how she's moving her leg now. I mean, I'm not gonna breed her from a genetic standpoint because we don't know if it's genetic. And I still sent in her color test results and her health screening just to make sure there's nothing else we're dealing with on top of it. Some of you have brought up a recent mare. So a recent mare, is a recipient, AKA a surrogate mare. So that is essentially a mare that carries the egg and then the stallions, you know, I don't know what all I can say on YouTube without getting hit. But anyways, they're carrying that in their uterus. So they're a surrogate, okay? So essentially there'd be no genetic repercussions from Belle if she was a recent mare. I am not saying I'm gonna do that. I'm just, you know, talking about it. There's other creators that are really into breeding and recips. Katie Vance, like, like she's really cool. Um, I've watched her stuff, but anyways, 
I'm not saying I'm gonna do that. If her leg was better from the vitamin E because she's so structurally sound as a broodmare, it is an option for her. I just don't know if that's something I could ever do because I feel like so many horses need homes from an ethics standpoint. But at the same time, Belle is like a phenomenal broodmare. And if I was breeding something that was gonna be for me, choosing the mare and the stallion, and it was something I was gonna keep as a forever horse, that's how I could justify it. But that's just not ever something that's really come up in my mind because I've never been in this kind of situation. But I also want Belle to feel like she has purpose. And what I mean by that is everybody wants to have purpose. People love to have something to do. They love purpose. And that could be for her, um, obviously not her specifically, but horses in general, riding horses, driving horses, therapy horses, brood mares, you know, the list goes on and on. Everybody wants to feel like they have a purpose. As of right now, I think it's just focusing on her health and her well-being and trying to get her comfortable for as long as we possibly can and give her a good quality of life. And when it gets to the point where she no longer has a quality of life, she can't hold her legs for the farrier at all, or we can't trim them on the ground and you know it's not benefiting her, or she can't hold weight, then we have to make decisions. And again, I'm not trying to freak anyone out. I don't know when that will be. She could have a completely full life, a really long life, or it could be the opposite. I don't know. We're just gonna do what we can. But I'm basically just telling you what's on my mind and just what I've come across research-wise and kind of giving you the update. So get that vitamin E in her system, get all that body work stuff, you know, even more of it up to date, just go hard with that. We're gonna do the groundwork, the pole work, get her fit, figure out the pasture situation for her. So in the next few weeks, I am gonna figure out a different pasture situation for her and get her out there, but yeah. So that's what's going on. I think in yesterday's video, I wasn't quite understanding and I, I don't think everybody else was either, like how actually detrimental and sucky this is. And this is just part of what I do. This is gonna, not this specific situation, but this is gonna happen again because this is just part of our mission. And I also wanna talk about that. So she's not going anywhere. Belle is never leaving. And that's because number one, I don't trust people, especially knowing with what she has. So she's not suitable for any type of home that I see fit other than my home. Um, not that I'm the end all be all, but it's my responsibility, okay? She has this disease, she's staying here, she needs to get you know the right care. So she will not be leaving, she'll be here forever. However, my goal for horses is to move them along. Like that is my mission at Free Spirit Equestrian. So, it's really hard now because I do get so attached to the horses and the goal is goodbye, okay? And that's so I can help the next horse. And I know that doesn't make sense to some of you, but that doesn't matter because it makes sense to me and I know I'm making a difference, right? Like, it really sucks what's going on with Belle, but at the same time, thank goodness she's here and could have her baby here and now she's gonna get the care she needs to the best of my possible ability and She's either gonna you know, stay comfortable or she's gonna have a soft place to fall, okay? So that is the beauty in Belle and the whole situation. And she has blessed me beyond belief with Esmeralda. The whole story was just amazing. This is very sad, but this is reality. Again, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. I'm usually a really optimistic, <laughs> you, you distract me. I'm a really optimistic person, but I'm also like serious and practical at the same time, you know? And being responsible, like I now could have a horse for years that essentially cannot be ridden, cannot really do anything besides the care or a potential recip. Like again, not Sam doing that, but just talking out loud. And that's hard because I don't have a big property, right? Like. We don't have this huge facility with endless acres where it's like, oh, okay, she can just be a pasture puff. It is hard in the sense because now I, I really can't move her along and I really can't do the things that I wanted to, but I went into it knowing that, so it's okay. But again, just talking about reality and I think that's why, not her specifically, but why horses get passed around is because these situations come up. But as a horse owner and this situation, she's not an eligible candidate 
to move along at this point. So, yeah. So yeah, we're gonna figure it out, but I just wanted to update you with a more detailed version of what's going on. Please read the articles if you actually are really invested. I'm sure if you've listened this long, you're invested into her story, but read the article so you understand, you know, before just putting other stuff out there and other information, so. And I hope this is educational for you as well. I mean, it is for me too. Like this is a new situation I'm dealing with and it's, it's, it's really good to learn. And now I have more knowledge and understanding of this, but it's also super emotional and it's hard because my plan didn't go the way I thought it was going to like at all with belt and that's okay. Again, just part of the journey, but yeah. Kyle, what do you think of the whole thing? Well, it's definitely not what we were expecting. So it's pretty, you know, sad news, but um, yeah, she'll have a home here. Hopefully she, I think we're going to continue our groundwork. Hopefully she, you know, improves. So we did notice a lot of atrophy back there. She's lost a lot of muscle since we bought her. So I'm hoping that with groundwork and stuff, that'll build up a little bit and she'll look a little bit healthier back there. But her weight's still good. She's still happy. She's friendly. So, I don't know. We'll have her. We'll keep her. She'll be happy. She's definitely comfortable here. Like, yeah. she's coming out of, you know, she's come out of her shell so much. She knows she's safe. And that that's what's important. Like, she knows that this is a safe place. Is that Cola? Yeah, I just, I don't know. Just emotional about it. And it's well, just... It's just what we do, though. Just a lot to process. Yeah, we've dealt with some stuff like this before, so. Yep. Why do I? Why do I like horses? Oh, no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Koa Lavi. You like Kyle? I think we need to get her a treat. You've been standing here like a good girl. Go get her a treat. You gonna get her a peppermint? Let's see. I don't know if she if she likes peppermints. Let's see if you'll eat the carrot too. Okay, the peppermint was good. As he spit out the carrots the other day when I was giving them to her. Let her chew that first. I t Did you spit just some, she gave some to Koa. She spit a little chunk out. <laughs> yes. You're such a pretty girl. I'm really hoping that a vitamin E will help her too. She has gained some weight too, and a little bit of muscle, but like I said, it's still like definitely atrophied. Well, like Shay said, we've done everything. You know, up to this point, we've done what we can. We ordered the vitamin E, so that's the next step. We'll see how it goes, but we brought her to several vets. You know, spent a lot of money that I think a lot of people wouldn't on a horse like this a lot of the sad thing is like Shay said a lot of horses like this they'll just get put on put back brought back to the auction and sold to the next person and then hand it up off and off again that's what happens to a lot of these horses that we buy until someone like Shay buys them that's willing to give them a chance and that's what we did but so yeah, yeah we'll see what the future holds yep but that's kind of where we're at now you sweet girl. You got such a pretty head. She can also be a bridal model. We got that. <laughs> and lipstick. Yeah, and she's so, she's super happy right now, and she's gorgeous. That's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to, like, be super negative. I just want you to understand what we're dealing with. She's like, what? Also, horse lovers, if you want to support Free Spirit Equestrian, the best way you can do that is to order something off the Spirited Horse Boutique. Today, I'm wearing our two-point tint in our galloping and gold, so we don't take donations or anything like that. But if you want to support, I have my online store, and that's the way you can do it. We also have an Amazon wish list, so you can check it out. Link in the comments and the description. Thank you. Well, horse lovers, I really appreciate you watching, and just thank you again for all of your support and your comments. It means so much to Belle and I, and we just wanna keep you updated on this journey. So horse lovers, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything Free Spirit Equestrian, and I'll keep you updated on Belle and all of the other horses, and we'll see you next time. Bye.